Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. This is still a pretty new channel, so it really helps. Injustice 2 came out in March of 2017, and yet we continue to see action figures based on it to this very day. Mattel made a couple before they lost the license, Storm Collectibles have been coming out with new ones, and now McFarlane Toys has thrown their hat in the ring with the Injustice 2 Flash and Gorilla Grodd. Truth be told, I'm not really that into the game, so I'm probably not going to be picking the Flash up. But if you take a look behind me, you can see I do have a pretty vibrant DC collection, and one character I'm sorely missing is Gorilla Grodd. This is going to be my best option. But will he work with my collection? Only one way to find out. Let's take him over to the review station and dig in. Starting off with the packaging, and it's the typical McFarlane Multiverse box that we know and love. Name and logo up front. Name and where it's from on the side. Itty bitty little injustice on top. And a picture on the back. What separates this from other McFarlane Multiverse toys is that this is an actual picture of the figure instead of artwork. Here are some other figures that he's offering, and yeah, as you can see, this is all drawn. I like the artwork, but I will always take a product shot any day. It's a McFarlane box. What you see is what you get. Not much more to say, so for packaging, I'm giving Grodd one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and we can see that Grodd comes to seven and a half inches. We're going to go over the whole thing, but let me just start out by saying how much I love this gold. But starting off with his face, I do feel like we have a little bit of sloppy painting. The mouth itself is definitely sloppy, although I could chalk that up to him being a savage animal. But my biggest issue are the eyes. No pupils, just two red dots that are way too close together. But what it lacks in paint detailing, it of course makes up for in sculpt. And just something about the shape of it kind of reminds me of the armor from the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. Moving on to the shoulders, we've got these really cool spikes and this human skull. Then on down to the forearm and claws. His chest has this weird piece kind of sticking out, and i got to be honest, I don't really see much of a function for it. Although so I guess he could use it as a pocket. A little bit of a chip taken out of mine. And I kind of low-key love the abs sculpted over this big gorilla gut. Spinning him around, we can see he has a similar armor plate over his back. But then when we get down to his butt, things get kind of weird. For whatever reason, this is a matte finish, even though the rest of his fur is glossy. Normally, it's because this piece is kind of soft and rubbery to accommodate the leg articulation. But no, this is a pretty normal, hard plastic, he says as he spanks the monkey. <coughs> pretty cool thigh and shin guard. There is a bit of scuffing and discoloration on this side though. And I love how he only has a claw on one of his toes. Kind of reminds me of the finger armor that people used to buy over at Hot Topic. What little paint detailing there is is kind of sloppy, but this figure is really all about the sculpt and what a sculpt it is. For presentation, I'm giving Grodd one whole point. Moving on to posability, and this is where things get interesting. They definitely did some new things with this figure that I'm very excited about. First things first, Grodd's head is on a barbell joint, side to side with no trouble. Not much up, but a decent amount down. Tilt and tilt. Ooh, 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 ooh. They did a really great job of sculpting these pauldrons away from the shoulder, so his arm goes up pretty great. And of course he has that McFarlane Toys rotator cup butterfly joint doohickey gimmick. Bicep swivel. Single jointed elbow, but it does swivel. But where things get really interesting is the wrist. You'll notice that there isn't any hideous ball joint there. Instead, we have a swivel and a hinge. It isn't perfect and does kind of stick out a bit, but this is a fantastic step in the right direction. The diaphragm joint is nicely hidden under this armor piece. Pretty decent range there. He also has waist articulation. He can hunch over that far and arch that far back. And of course, side to side. Pretty decent range on the hips, but I want you to be warned, after just a little bit of playing around, I've already got some paint rub. Single jointed knee, but there is actually rotation. He does have toe articulation, which I tend to forget to mention, but the showstopper is the ankles. Notice that there is no giant ugly ball. Instead, we get regular old fashioned hinge and, wait for it, rocker. They finally gave us the ankle articulation that we've been wanting, and oh my grod, McFarlane Toys, I know you're not watching me, I barely have 20 subscribers, but if you are, please, 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 more of this. Between the wrists, the boot cut, and the ankles, this is a huge step in the right direction. 
I hope it's something that we see a lot more of. But whether it is or it isn't, for posability, I'm giving this Grodd figure one whole point. Moving on to playability, and Grodd comes with this trading card and figure stand. If you're curious what the card says, you can pause and read it now. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. So here he is up against the DC Essentials Flash. And just for giggles, here he is up against Godzilla. Oh, and while we're on the subject, as you can see, I did actually go in and paint some eyes and teeth on him. And yeah, I think it helps. He looks great, but he does have his drawbacks. The lack of accessories is a problem, but mostly just the lack of other figures to put him with. Hopefully McFarlane gives us some more Injustice figures, but even if they don't, he's still pretty fun all on his own. For playability, I'm giving Grodd half a point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Grodd retails for 20 to 25 bucks, which, for this hunk of plastic, isn't that bad. It's also worth noting that at this scale, your only other options are an old Mattel Build-A-Figure, which goes for a lot of money, or an old DC Direct figure, which goes for a lot of money. This Grodd is pretty much your best bet. He might not be in his classic form, but he is in a pretty awesome one. For price, I'm giving Grodd one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, have fun.